I'm feeling nervous. Very nervous. That is absolutely brutal. Oh, that was absolutely insane. I've never dug that deep for such a long time. That was genuinely really hard. We're all in awe of how fast road bikes are, especially at events such as the Olympics. And it got me thinking, could an e-mountain bike hang with a road bike around a racetrack such as this? Well, today we're here at Castle Coombe to find that one out. So for today's challenges, I've invited none other than GTN's powerhouse, Chris Opie. The guy is an absolute machine on a bike. Six UCI victories, 20 year career racing bikes, and a sprint specialist. We're racing around Castle Coombe Race Circuit, which is based in the southwest of England. It's a shade under three kilometers per lap with a total of seven corners. It's a full tarmac track and it's super smooth. The circuit has about 67 feet of climbing, meaning it's pretty flat. Perfect for some high-speed two-wheel action. We've devised three different challenges. We've got the flying 500 meter sprint race. Next up after that, we've got the 1K solo time trial. Then after that, the final nail in the coffin is gonna be a two lap individual pursuit race. We're gonna do two laps around the circuit. Fastest man is gonna win the day. Yeah, and we'll take the overall times from everything put together and whoever covers the distances in the least amount of time goes home as the winner. As the winner. That sounds fair, right? So my bike of choice today is my Pinarello F12 Dogma. It's ultra modern, ultra aero, ultra lightweight, built for racing. It's got 24 gears, SRAM red group set. I think I'm only use one gear, the 4610, which is my top gear. And I'm only revving that out pretty quick down here in my efforts to try and beat Chris today. The weapon of choice for today's challenge is a modified high bike Estuero Hard 9 Hardtail. It's got 29 inch wheels with slick Max's grifter tires. These should offer lower rolling resistance and these tires are pumped up to 65 PSI. Powering the bike is a Yamaha PWX motor, 80 Nm torque, 250 watts motor. It is of course de-restricted with a badass e-bike box, meaning the bike has the speed limiter removed because the 15 mile an hour limit simply wouldn't hack it around the circuit. Even though my e-bike was de-restricted, it was only de-restricted to 50 kilometers an hour, meaning that any speed above 50, it was all down to me. Up front, I've got a huge 44 tooth chainring running an 1146 cassette. The big problems with a de-restricted e-bike is running out of gears at high speed. I've also brought along a few extra items to give me that performance edge if needed. So you go, Opie, what do you think to my fine flyer machine? It's gonna smash you today. It's an overweight, underpowered, kind of, identity crisis bike. It's got a dropper post on it, it's got slick tires. Look at all these cables. You've got no chance. I think you're gonna be eating your words. Can man beat machine? Man can beat machine. Can this man right now beat machine? I don't know, I'm quite nervous about it. Chris and I have just done a bit of a gentle warm up. I'm going up and down the start finish straight. And he said, oh, we'll just go gently until the start. And I was like sprinting, trying to keep up with him. So either Chris is a lot fitter than he's letting on, or I'm not as fit as I thought I was. Right, Chris, our first challenge is the rolling 500 metre sprint race. Now, this should suit you down to the ground with all your sprinting prowess. Yeah, and the aero bike. For sure. Now, the world champion in this did it in 32 seconds at a staggering speed, 62 kilometres an hour. Is that something you think you're going to smash today? I think we might we might get close to that because we've got the ro rolling start, of course. Got the rolling they, start, yeah. They did it from a standing start. Did they? That's course, incredible. Yeah, that sounds amazing. And this, of course, you've got the tailwind as well. So should help us out loads. Yeah, what's the rule on the elbows? Are we, are we fighting Do what you like, or? goes arrows, you like elbows out? Yeah. Who's I mean, gonna win, Chris or Chris? It? My one is on Chris. Nice progressive start, here we go. Let's get this. About right, speed wise. You ready? You got that, three, two, one. That. <laughs> that was genuinely really hard. Oh, that was fun. That was so good. That's crazy. I thought you were going to beat me. Crazy. I was like off the line. 
I was going in the head and then I think just that gearing, you had that yeah. extra gear to push. And then you just went past at rocket speed, I think. Open boost mode engaged. Yeah. What yeah. speed were you hitting down there? I looked down, I was like 37 mile an hour. So I got just under 42. 42? Uh, no, sorry, just under 45. Whoa. 17.9 kilometers an hour. Really? Which is close Crazy. to what I thought we'd do. Yeah, yeah. That was mental though, wasn't it? For those first 10 seconds, I yeah. thought, I'd, like, there's no way I can out drag you here. Yeah. It's crazy, wasn't it? And I'm not super out. I was tucked in as much as I could. But yeah, fair play on that one. Round one to OP. Oh, quite happy now. Feel relaxed. Pressure's Nice. <laughs> Right, Chris, you monumentally smashed me in that sprint challenge. So this is challenge number two. Now this is a one kilometer solo time trial. Now, can you remember Chris Hoy? Can you remember the time he did this in? I do. It was around 60 seconds, 60 wasn't it? 60 seconds, yeah, back in 2004. So it's a monumental effort. Do you think we're going to see that in today's efforts? <sighs> Should we be really honest? We've got a bit of a tailwind, haven't we? Possibly, yeah. It could so happen. it might be possible, but Chris Hoy's yeah. twice the size I am. Right. Okay. So you probably have twice the power. Of yours. Exactly. <laughs> Right, so let's get this challenge underway then. So we're gonna get a helper. So it's a standing start. You can get clipped in. One kilometer, flat out. Good luck. Cheers, Chris. Three, two, one, go! That is absolutely brutal. So I think he's got a bit of an aero advantage, so I'll nip back to the van. Got a bit aero going, full time trial for this one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I was just trying to pull my dropper up. Three, two, one, go! That was hard work. Ah, just run out of power. Just not enough gears left. I was just spinning out the whole way down the straight, just kind of flat line. So just gonna get above about 40 mile an hour, I think. Well, I think Chris has got a bit of an advantage over this two lap race now because it's quite slow and it's quite uphill for the entire well, for like two thirds of the track is uphill and into a headwind because it's shaped like a triangle and the wind's coming across the track in a way that means it's just going to, I think, going to play into his hands. Like it's obviously faster on this when, it's, when the speed is high, but that's such a short period of the track, it's going to make it hard to make up any sort of deficit that I might rack up on the slow bits. So yeah, I'm quite nervous. My legs are a little bit tired because we've been going genuinely pretty hard. There's not a lot of time in it at the moment. It's all to play for. Right, Chris, it comes down to the third and final chapter, the individual pursuit race, where we're gonna start two laps of this circuit, but we're gonna start you from here and me from the halfway point over on the other side of the track, and as the first person to complete the two laps, it's gonna take the win. So I need to put 10 seconds into you on this one, yeah. and I'm feeling pretty confident with this headwind, got a bit of elevation this time as well, so I'm not gonna see that smile on your face after this one. I don't no, think. I don't think you are. I don't think either of us will be smiling after two laps no, around here either. It's not gonna be fun, is it? I'm halfway around the track, OP is on the other side of the circuit. Hopefully, this is my chance to take him down.
I think I really want to be sick. I was worried Chris was going to catch me. I got no idea where he is or how he's doing. Good to warm up, Chris, and thanks for an amazing day on the bike. It's Cheers, been Chris. so good. So I think it's about time we looked through all the data from the ride and the times involved. Yeah. Now, first challenge was that 500 meter flying sprint. Now I did that in 37 seconds. You smashed me, what was your time in the end? 34 seconds, yeah. Yeah, I had you up to about halfway as well. Do you see that? Yeah. I think you were I felt to it as well. Yeah. I, was, I was getting pretty nervous because it didn't really know what was gonna happen starting out. And it's the mm. only challenge where we could see each other the whole time. Exactly. So and it's a bit of a worry. Super close, but I think I hit that halfway mark. Then you just seemed to change up a gear and you just disappeared. And I think you just smashed me there by three seconds. Yeah. So Once I got close. all the way down that cassette into that 10 and that was it. Just no stopping you. No. And that's your speciality sprinting, so there's no stopping you. What was the max speed? 44.3 miles an hour or something? Yeah, I think I managed no. to get 41.7 as well. So it's fast as well. Pretty close. It? Right, so next up, Chris, was the 1K solo time trial. Now this was pretty hard. As you say, in the sprint race, we could see each other so we could gauge each other. This was a solo effort. For 1K, I managed to do one minute, nine seconds. It's a fast time. And you're looking pretty fast yourself, come on. 102. 102. I'm so quite proud of that. Smash me by seven seconds on that. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Do you know your average speed or max speed for uh, that? So my max speed in that was just a little bit slower than the first one. It was right. just under 44 miles an hour. Yeah. Uh, the average speed, I think it was just over 35. I can't remember. I did look at it earlier. So you're smashing it. I was yeah. going as hard as I could. I genuinely could not go any harder. Really? Seven seconds. That's a big margin. So next up was the individual pursuit. I found this the hardest. You did? Because it was completely blind. Completely I had no idea blind. who was where. And the weather as well. The headwind was pretty savage as yeah. well. It wasn't as straightforward as the other two. The other two mm -hmm. are short, they're sweet, you can go for all in. But yeah. this one, you had to pace it a little bit because yeah, yeah. you couldn't die halfway around the first lap. A bit of tactics and a bit of the... I struggled with the aero tuck technique. I don't know if you saw that as well, but not my cup of tea. But Notice you didn't. You didn't struggle with the headwear. No, exactly. Oh, I like that one. But what was your time on that one, Chris? <laughs> right, so my time on that one was eight minutes and 24, eight which I thought was good. Yeah, and what was your max heart rate on that? 183. 183. Well, Chris, I hate to say this, but I smashed that one out in eight minutes, 16. So I won by eight seconds on there. Uh, max heart rate wasn't quite as high as yours, 175, but still. So you said you could have tried a bit harder even? Mm, possibly, I need an extra gear but it's super close at the end of the day, but it looks like total time from all these challenges, you've just pipped me by two seconds yeah. overall. So good work on that. Thank and you it has been much. a hell of a day out at Castle Coon. It's been good fun. Thank you again for having no me over. If you want to stick around and check out another video here on EMBN, click down here for XC Racer versus e-bike. And if you want to see Dan Lloyd take on Nico Vuyos, mountain bike legend over at the Coldham Dome, click just there. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Drop some comments in the box below about how we can make our bikes even faster. And don't forget to click the globe in the middle to subscribe to EMBN.